welcome. I'm Antonina Antosha and you are watching Head to Head with UATV. Ukrainian and international election observers have announced that the July 21st parliamentary election in Ukraine was held in a fair and competitive manner. According to the preliminary results, five political parties were elected to the ninth convocation of the Rikovna Rada. In particular, Servant of the People Party, the Opposition Platform for Life, European Solidarity, Batkivshina and Holos. To talk more about the assessment of these elections, we are joined in the studio today by Dr. Olga Ono. She is an associate professor in politics at the University of Manchester, an associate member of Nuffield College. Hello and thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So you've been watching the process of the parliamentary elections in Ukraine very closely. What are your impressions? Well, I think most importantly, it's we need to stress this was a free and fair election okay. uh, amongst one of the most free and fair that we've seen in Ukraine mm -hmm. to date. So I think that's important. And this is a dramatic shift in parliamentary politics in mm -hmm. Ukraine. We've never seen something like this. We've never seen a party get an outright majority in this way. We'll talk about this later. Yeah, so these are, these are the most important things, I think, that things are changing. Things are changing dramatically. And uh, some, of the, some of the politicians may have not learned their lesson from the presidential elections, it seems. Um, and they paid the price. Could you dwell a little bit more on that? Well, I mean, <laughs> there was an obvious dramatic failure of many presidential campaigns um, a few months back, right? Losing with a 73 percent uh, in, in the case of the former president, Petro Poroshenko, it's dramatic. And clearly the electorate was saying, we are unhappy with the way you propose run politics and what you propose to us in campaigns. Mm -hmm. You're not listening to us. And that was this. So a lot of us that observe uh, politics in Ukraine, we were looking at this moment and trying to explain to the, the general public in the West, certainly, it wasn't necessarily about just Zelensky and how great he was, but it was also about how dissatisfied people were with what. Um, Mainly it was. Right, exactly. The and then it seems that no lessons were learned, right? The campaigns did not turn to the issues that the median voter in Ukraine cares about. Mm. The campaigns did not focus on bread and butter issues for the most part. They did not focus on the fact that in the last five years, many people have become poorer and dramatically poorer. And that tariffs, even though this policy is important and many Western partners support this, this is hard. This means that people are making a choice between paying their rent and buying food, right? Yeah, uh, right. And, and paying their tariffs. And that wasn't discussed. And so once again, what Poroshenko proposed, or uh, rather, Europejska Strategia or uh, European Strategy, um, and some of the other uh, uh, new parties uh, on the bloc, like Holos, they were just not talking about the issues that most people care about on the day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. And you have the results that you have. Uh, they also didn't unite, <laughs> uh, right? This, this. Uh, European strategy in Holos and a few others like um, Groisman strategy or, um, or uh, uh, you know, uh, Lashko. Lash well, Lashko wasn't an obvious uh, coalition in those. But, you know, certainly Holos, certainly uh, European strategy, certainly Groisman, they could have come together maybe with Sadovi and mm -hmm, Samopomich. Mm -hmm. They could have had a much stronger coalition. Uh, coalition campaign and get more more seats in parliament yeah well now they got what they got yeah speaking of campaigns um comparing to the previous parliamentary or presidential elections held in ukraine how fair was the campaigning process in terms of violations so from my reading of OSCE reports and a few other reports like um, the Committee of Voters of Ukraine, etc., there weren't as many uh, violations. There were certain violations in some places. Um, you know, there is this problem with both Sluha uh, Narodu and Holos where they have uh, camp they have party leaders who are also uh, stars, right? And they are connected to television, yeah, entrepreneurs, but also connected to uh, entertainment industries. And that blurred once again in these campaigns here, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so, of course, showing during the presidential campaign, showing the, the, the sitcom about the president, that was problematic, right? Most observers did think that was a version of illegal campaigning. Um, as were the 
Quartal concerts, etc. But so were the Okean Elze concerts, right? right? That is also, we know when Okean Elze's uh, concert billboard says it's going to be loud. Buda Holosno, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're referring to the party. Oh, so these kinds of things were happening. Um, and in the uh, in the majoritarian seats, yeah, we saw a variety of different things happening, which was similar to past years. Uh, but this this in infotainment entertainment element, mm. this electoral cycle was certainly different in a way because of that. And I thought it was weird that when people supported one party, they criticized the other, and when they supported the other party, they criticized. So they didn't look at their own parties and admit to the fact that, quite frankly, an Okean is a concert that has the party name in its main billboard is also problematic. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, even the concert itself, it's, yeah. it could be already considered as yeah. an agitation. And if it's free or <laughs> yeah. et cetera, yeah. Speaking of the Servant of the People party, that is basically still in the show according to preliminary results produced by the Central Election Commission and the National Exit Poll. Um, I think that this is an unprecedented situation when people of Ukraine unanimously voted for one party. What do you think about it? Well, not unanimously. I think that is important. So we do have, you know, more than 50% voted for someone else. So that's, okay. imp- that's important, right? Um, but certainly a large plurality voted for Suhan Arado. And, and across the board, we see it repeated, repeated over again. Very similar results to what we saw during the presidential election. Luhansk and Donetsk uh, are voting um, for Zajitya, Opposition Platforma Zajitya. Uh, and um, and uh, you have Lviv that voted for Holos, in this case, not for European strategy. But across the board, the plurality of votes are going to Sluha Narodo. Mm-hmm. This does mean that there are, you know, because the plurality votes and because of the majoritarian system that's combined with the... the the uh, the overall uh, system, it is these two systems that are working together, this does mean that there is a portion of votes that are not being counted for, especially in the majoritarian seats, mm-hmm. right? So there are people that are not being represented. And if you just do the math, even, of those bottom uh, parties that are not going to make it into parliament, we're talking about a few million, right? Mm. So there are a lot of voters who are just not going to be represented in any way, shape, or form in the parliament, mm-hmm. which is something that I think policy makers will need to take a look at in future years. But yes, we haven't seen something like this, as I already said. And it's... Is it risky? It, I mean, it, it is, it's risky if the people who are in this party are not doing, uh, not engaging in politics or entering politics for the right reasons, right? Mm-hmm. We, we can't know this about all of them. Um, we certainly know that some of them are very engaged and positive and hoping to do good things. Some look suspicious to us already. Um, but this is a, a waiting game now. Um, we haven't, because we have never seen something like this before, we don't know what's going to happen. And because we know so little about Zelensky, for instance, as a politician or his team as a political team, We can't be certain how they're going to govern. So for how long do we need to be playing this waiting game? Until they show us otherwise. I think we should expect and hope for the best. Um, I I, I think there are a lot of professional people that have gone into the party that I would respect and I would expect them to do good things. Mm. Um, certainly, and across the various parties, not just in Sluhan Narod, there are a lot of first-time yeah. politicians. Speaking so. of which, new faces and first-time politicians, the people that do not have any experience in politics, is it a pro or a contra right now in Ukraine? Yeah, so it's pro and contra. You will see, it's a, it's a, it depends on the person. We can't possibly know whether a very experienced civil society politician, uh, not politician, policy maker, whether or not they will live up to the demands in parliament. Mm. Uh, that we can't foresee. But of course, even the people who were involved in journalism or in civil society organizations or in various levels of bureaucracy or, or lawyers that entered into the last Rada, the last parliament, 
they had a hard time. They had to get used to the way that things work. They had to get used to the various rules of the game, and they had to make sure that they didn't fall prey mm -hmm. to manipulations, right? Yeah. So that was also tricky. And there's a lot of people that are going to have to learn this all over again. Yeah. Hopefully they will turn to people with experience. Hopefully they will turn to impartial experts and scholars that do know what they're talking about um, and they don't take this as a mandate that they are in themselves the best uh, informed best place mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. this is going to where the hu if hubris comes into play that's a problem so if Sluan Narodo takes this as a blank slate we can now do whatever we want probably there there is going to be problems this is a difficult time in Ukraine to pass any policies, um, even if you can do it with a majority. There are difficult issues at hand. Any problems that then arise, Sudan Narodo will have to respond all on their own. But okay. if they join a coalition, if they work with partners, if they invite uh, local, national, and foreign experts to work with them, th th that blame will be shared across a broader group of people. Speaking of international experts, there are international partners of Ukraine who already have obviously stated their mind about what is happening, about the, res the preliminary results of the parliamentary elections. Now, what are the expectations of the international partners of Ukraine placed on the Sluga Narodo party? I think the expectations are that you, the reforms will continue okay. and that reforms will speed up where they kind where they certainly stopped or stagnated under the past government uh, the most successful reforms that they are prioritized mm -hmm. uh, i've been telling everyone it's decentralization is highly popular in ukraine yeah. um, the general electorate really likes the idea also in we see that when we do empirical analyses we see that in places where decentralization happened people have greater faith greater levels of faith in democracy so it helps to build this culture of democracy at the local level mm -hmm, as well. Mm -hmm. So this is something that they should certainly continue. Um, and uh, I think that is the main thing. There are certain reforms that are underway, whether they are economic reforms, whether they are um, in the medical sphere, yeah. in the education um, education sector. This is what the partners expect to continue. Except for reforms, what else? Well, certainly the, the peace process. Um, and the Minsk agreements, and how do you go forward from this? Uh, I think the international community is fairly invested in the last Minsk agreement. They really want this to be the blueprint for peace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Ukrainian side might have different perspectives on this, but this is what many of the partners would expect, um, certainly Zelensky and his, and his whole team, and now Parliament, to go forward with. Uh, or propose a constructive alternative, yeah. which uh, I, I so far haven't seen something like that coming out of this team, but maybe we will um, when they start getting rolling and they have their ministers in place. Well, I think that the expectations are pretty much the same within the citizens of Ukraine. Thank you so much for coming here and sharing this information with us. Thank you very much for having me. That was Dr. Olga Ono. She is an associate professor in politics at the University of Manchester and an associate member of Newfield College. Thank you so much for watching UATV. Stay tuned for more. Yeah.